started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Hi friends, welcome back to the Make Life Fun podcast. I have a treat for you today. I have my good friend Jillian Zahner on the show. Jillian, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Josie. I am very excited to be with you today. Yes, this is a treat. Please feel free to tell us about you, whatever is on your heart about you and your journey to becoming a mom. On the show, we are talking all about like self-acceptance. That's like the big umbrella here. Thank you so much. Well, I am originally from St. Lucia, and that is in the lower Eastern Caribbean. So don't think Jamaica, think <laughs> all the way down towards Guyana, Venezuela over there. I am just above Trinidad and Tobago, right next to Barbados and just underneath Martinique. So I grew up, unfortunately, without a dad. I was actually the product of an adulterous affair. And I grew up without having a father. But with the whole friends and family aspect that's in the Caribbean, I didn't think that it affected me so much because I think there was only two other people on my block in my neighborhood that actually had fathers in the home. So as I grew up and grew older, I realized there were a lot of things in my heart and even in the way that I accepted love that was classic signs of father neglect and that actually trickled down throughout my adult life until I had a very transformative experience with Jesus myself. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Will you take us a little bit through that transformative journey? I just wanted to put a disclaimer out there. Everybody's journey is different and this is my journey. I just hope you will be able to accept me as a person and I I really hope that I'm not gonna sound judgmental or holier than thou when I speak because I'm not. I am just so full of God's light because I felt like he rescued me. I had a lot of horrible things in my background. And again, without the protection of a father, I was victimized a lot sexually. And I really grew up without a desire to really like honor people. In my earlier years, I always felt like it's what I could get out of a relationship. And I felt like I never loved anybody truly and purely just because of who they were. It was always what I could get from them. So for example, I love my teachers because they helped me learn, not just because they were people. I love my mom because she took care of me. I love my brothers and sisters because they were fun to be around sometimes. I love my friends because I picked them and they helped me feel better about myself. So I never had an experience where you actually love someone just because they're a human being and they deserve love. I never had that experience. And if it was modeled for me, because I don't want to sound like I had the most horrible childhood because I did not. If it was modeled for me, I did not recognize what it was. So anyways, I was growing up and I really thought that the thing that was going to make me happy was making lots of money and becoming a, a lawyer, having an education, get somebody to take care of my kids whilst I enjoyed the world and the time. But I had absolutely no clue how I was going to get there. I graduated at 16 and I did well at school and I got accepted to a college. So I was going to work for the semester before I headed off to college at this hotel in the Caribbean. Now at this hotel, I met this guy who shared the simple gospel of Jesus Christ with me. He just took me through the Bible and showed me that I was not good on my own, that I needed a savior. I really recognized that I did need a savior, that I was not a good person as I thought I was. And then I accepted Jesus in my heart and I just immediately had this transformation where he came into my heart and made me love people properly. I got to 
enjoy being with Jesus as a man, which I had never experienced before. When I say that, I mean like I could talk to him. I could feel safe with him. I felt like he actually truly cared about me so much so. And I say this story because this is only because of Jesus. The man, I don't remember the details, but the man who had inappropriately touched me when I was around eight or nine, I can't remember all of the details and trauma does that to people. I saw him again right after I gave my life to Jesus. I think I was about 19 at that time or, or 17, no, 17. When I saw him, all of that hurt and that anger came back towards me. And I came, went up to him and I said, why did you do this to me? And he looked at me deadpan and said, because I loved you. And he was at least 25 years older than me. I was a little girl at that time. And I looked at him and I felt this incredible love and compassion for him because God spoke to my heart that same moment. And he said, look at this, look at how bound up that the devil has him, that he believes that he could love a little girl who is so much younger than him and he could steal her innocence. And I was just like, wow, I know where I'm going. I have experienced God's love and he hasn't and he doesn't. And I immediately felt this overpowering sensation of love and forgiveness towards him. And I was able to forgive him on that spot. That literally that just gave me chills all over my body. We all have our story of the hardships that we go through. But that forgiving piece is so hard. Yes, it is actually hard when we figure out that we are not better than other people. Like, so for example, my lying is not better than somebody else's stealing. My anger and my hatred towards somebody's actions is not better from than somebody else's adultery. In our culture, we've kind of like classified things well this is not as bad and this is not as good as bad and this is not as bad so for example we think oh growing up without a father having bunches of kids by different men that's not gonna hurt the children at all and then we get to see all of this the um, studies that come out that talk about the deficit the uh, the emotional trauma the likelihood of um, people who grew up without a nuclear loving family how much more they are to have unlikely outcomes in their future and i love how you're putting it because it's like you were saying, like my lying isn't, mm -hmm. is it as bad as somebody's adultery or like there isn't classification for our bad, like for mm -hmm. the things that we do, because a lot of times, yes, instantly in your head, you think, oh, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. But when you really come back to it, yeah, when you really come back to it, it is. Yeah, because we don't see everything. So we don't know how our actions really hurt people. So for example, for me, it's very easy for me to be like, oh, hey, come over, have a fun time. Let's let's have lunch or dinner, whatever. For my husband, it's like, I really want a lot of people around. Let's give me a week so we can plan this and all of that kind of stuff. The things that are very heavy on my heart cannot be as heavy for somebody else. So we have to make sure that we're loving people, not according to how we want to be loved mm. but how they're supposed to be loved in the first place like how god loves everybody how he takes care of their heart and that's what i have learned on my journey as a parent is taking care of my children's hearts yep and that just like gave me tangled over my body is because this is where you touched my heart this is where we connected you speaking to me in a way of like loving my child in a way to connect in a way to not break that connection and I want you to speak on that so that everyone can be like touched by this wisdom because it is it was game changer for me yes thank you so much for that compliment Josie <laughs> I'm so glad that you said that because sometimes we feel as parents that we don't do it properly mm -hmm. but I really want my whole life, I want my whole life to be that I am in a relationship that's mutually beneficial to whoever I'm in a relationship with. It could be with the homeless man that I want to give something to. It could be with my husband who I want to give my life and my heart to. Again, with my children who I want to give my heart and my life to. But every relationship has boundaries. And for a long time, I was taught like, you do everything for your children. You cater to all of the whims. Doesn't matter what they do 
to you. You just like punish them and then you move on. And I found out what actually that does, especially to children's heart, is it puts anger and frustration and it breaks the relationship. So when we look at healthy relationships, there's three things that make have healthy relationships thrive in my book and from reading the Bible, I've seen a lot of that. So the first one is trust. You cannot really feel comfortable or feel vulnerable or feel or even receive somebody's love if there isn't a trust built. The second one is acceptance. We have to accept that people are going to make mistakes. People are going to do better. People are not going to be perfect. And the third one is love. And it may seem like love is the last thing, but it's not. Because when you understand trust and acceptance, love becomes much easier for you. Oh, I love those three. Setting those healthy boundaries Mm -hmm. and accepting them for who they are, knowing that they're going to make mistakes and then loving them no matter what. But I think that boundary piece is super important. I would love for you to speak on that a little bit more. Right. So trust, acceptance, and love. And I think they're, um, once you put them all together, things are going to happen. So for example, my children did not ask to be in this world. They did not send me a telegram and be like, hey, I'd like to be born today. Now that I have invited them into my heart, into my life, and into my home, because a, a lot of times, like when we bring our children home, for me, I, it's very very important that I have a clean house. And I felt the number one violation (laughs) to my heart and to my spirit was how messy my four children are. It is an absolute violation that I have trusted them to be a part of my family. I have accepted them as my children and I love them, but they have absolutely no respect or desire for cleanliness. It's not on the list of priorities right now. So how do I work through that? Because my love language is acts of service. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I speak about love languages, there's this guy named Gary Chapman and he wrote this book called The Five Love Languages. And it basically tells us how most people receive love. For me, if you love me, clean up your mess. (laughs) If you love me, sweep the floor. If you love me, wash your dish. That's how I receive love. My kids, they just want to spend time with me. They want my undivided attention and they want to be where I am. But it's not on the priority list that when they're done, that they clean up. So we've had this ongoing battle. So one day I just spoke to them. And again, and this is the trust piece. Okay, so they're in my home. They're not a guest in my home. They're an actual part of my home. They make up the fabric of my home. So I want to trust them that when I expose my heart to them, Mm -hmm. that they could take care of it. Because my job is to protect their heart. So the first thing I say is, hey, I do not feel love when. So you see what I just did? I didn't say, oh, how dare you make a mess? Or I can't believe you dropped this off on there again. I always speak to them. This is how I feel. And normally the answer is, mom, please not right now. We want to do this. We want to do that. I said, okay. All right. Right now, I feel like my heart is not being taken care of. And I always ask them, how can I take care of your heart? Because sometimes the reason why people cannot take care of other people's hearts is because nobody is taking care of theirs. So I also always want to find out what is in their heart. But I also have to let them know whatever the world out there will not accept from them, I can't accept from them either. Can you imagine going up to your workplace and then making a trash heap of the entire place and saying, bye, we'll see you tomorrow. What's going to happen to you? You're not going to work there anymore. You're not going to work there anymore. So we want to have the same boundaries that the world has for them and help them to understand the consequences whilst the price is not losing the job, whilst the price is not having no money to pay for the stuff. Does that make sense? Oh, yes, that makes perfect sense. And it's like we're raising them to be the best versions of themselves what I feel like you're protecting each other's hearts but then they're going to take that out into the world and protect 
others' hearts and also know what is required of them. Now, one of the things I had to unlearn was that I had a hundred percent responsibility for the relationship. Like I felt like I had to do, make sure that they do all the things well. And I had to take their hates and be angry at, and not be angry and just like love them no matter what. But actually that's not love. That's not what love is because number one, love is patient. And when we take our time to be patient with things, we understand a lot of things better. So for example, I could just jump to, oh my goodness, they left the kitchen dirty again. Again, but not realize that again, it's not important for them that the kitchen is clean. So I have to constantly be reminding them why that is important to me. Okay. So in relationships, we have to realize that you as a mother, as a wife, as a friend, you cannot hold a hundred percent of the relationship. It has to be 50-50. It, is, it needs to be reciprocal to be able to be a healthy relationship. Because if you look at the kinds of relationships that are out there, we have have healthy relationships, we have abusive relationships, we have bad relationships, and then we have dependent relationships. And of course, there's a whole ton more, but these are the ones that I could think of that are most prevalent in our culture right now. And learning how to have a healthy relationship with my children has revolutionized the way I think. So for example, when they've made a huge mess in the house or in the kitchen and I retreat to my room and they come knocking, I'm like, oh, Oh, I'm so sorry. I really can't have you in here because this is my safe place. And I don't feel like you're going to protect my heart if I let you in. That would have been unheard of in my culture. What? You need to let your children come into your house. They need to be wherever you are. No, I need to be able to protect my heart and theirs so I could do it properly. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. I love that. We need to not just put that judgment of like, you did it again. It's done again. Like you can even, like you were saying, you could even go to that room and close the door and they're going to want in, but you're saying to them, like, I don't feel like you're going to protect my heart. And so, no, I'm not going to let you in here. And like you said, that is unheard of. I always tell my friends, like when I go through this talk with them and teaching them how we take care of our kids' heart, they're like, oh, but you know, you should just kind of like have grace for them. I'm like, that is grace because Mm -hmm. grace is giving them the power to be able to do things that's going to help them in the future. So when I set that boundary and I set up a standard for love, they're going to figure out, wait a second, this is not feeling right to me when they grow older. I don't need to accept this. I have the power to not accept whatever this is that I don't feel comfortable. The thing that's not making my heart feel safe, I don't have to accept it because I have taught them so well. So for example, one time we went to a birthday party and my son, I was on the phone in the car. My my son and my daughter came in and they're like, mom, can we leave right now? I said, oh, why do you want to leave right now? He goes, well, these two boys, they were really fighting and they were being so mean to each other. And I just didn't feel like my heart was being protected. Mind you, that was not happening to him. Those two boys were acting that way within themselves. But because I have put such a high priority on taking care of my heart and taking care of their heart, anything that feels offensive to them they know immediately they need to take themselves out of that situation it's amazing yeah that's like every mother every father this is their dream this is their hope is to instill these like these lessons into them so that they know when it feels wrong but they can they have that power that you're saying they can take themselves out of situations that don't feel comfortable and that starts in the home yeah and you know my kids may do things that may seem disrespectful to other people but then I just explain it to them and I'm like okay it may seem as disrespect but I have given them the freedom to be able to speak to me properly and, and lovingly so one day we had a few kids over and my daughter was doing some no I think her hair wasn't done and I said B why did you not do your hair before we started this and then she goes mom your hair is not done why didn't you you do your hair before you started this and there was like four other people here I am so sorry Benaya that made you feel very uncomfortable and embarrassed when I called out your hair not being Mm -hmm. done within everybody right there I just want to apologize to you because I didn't take care of your heart and I put anxiety in your heart can you please forgive me she goes I'm so sorry mom I should not have spoken to you that way. 
can you please forgive me? Now, immediately, our conventional co- parenting would go, oh my God, I can't believe you let her talk to you that way. How, how dare she do this and do that? But whatever we saw, whatever we put into the ground, that's what was, that's what was going to come out. So I put offense in her spirit. I put embarrassment in her spirit. So guess what came out? Offense and embarrassment towards me. So I had to realize, oh, I did not protect your heart. Please forgive me. And she immediately, because we have that relationship, Mm -hmm. she told me, I'm so sorry. Can you forgive me? Oh my gosh. Brilliant. So for the moms that are listening to this, that are thinking, oh my gosh, this is just too good to be true. (laughs) Because it kind of does almost sound too good to be true to be able to have that relationship with your child that you can literally talk about everything and trust them and know that they are, they can go out into the world and be these trusting little humans that, yeah. Yeah. And again, that comes with the trust and the acceptance and the love. I trust that you will take care of my heart. I accept that you may not be able to do it in the way that I feel like it's right. And I'm going to love you properly whilst we work this out. So for example, today was a knockdown, kick out, drag day. So my oldest daughter, she's 11 and we're doing some house renovations and she's in a room with three of her siblings. And it is, and we have a five bedroom house right now and it is, and we have two other people staying with us. So it's kind of, I understand coming from her having her own room and then being in a room with four, the three other people, her, her three siblings and bunk beds is really hard. It is really, really hard for her. It may seem like, oh, this is just like an American kid. So many people share rooms all over the the world and they don't have their own rooms, but that's not the case here. The case here is she had her own room and her own space and she had to go back to sharing with three messy little kids. I feel so bad for her. So that puts a lot of anger in her spirit because she comes, she always says, mom, they're always playing with my stuff. Mom, it's always nobody. They don't care about me. That's because that's how she in, in she interprets the lack of um, respect for her mm-hmm. stuff is I don't feel loved when people don't take care of my stuff. Mm-hmm. So I had to listen to this and it, she, it's made her really angry, especially at her brother, who is the messiest out of all of them. So she's more angry right now and more vocal. I'm not going to be yelling at her and screaming at her but today it really came to a head and she was screaming and screaming at him and she hit him so in our house hitting is just we call it aggravated assault because what would happen to you Josie if you got into an argument with somebody and you hit them out in the world charges they're going to press charges and there's going to be repercussions. Right. And I want them to understand that this is not a thing that's normal. This is aggravated as such. You go to jail for that and you might even end up paying a fine. So then I was like trying to get her attention and immediately I was overcome with this anger and I grabbed her and she was, she is in this really high space where she's angry. So she, she grabs me back and she's like, don't you touch me like this. Don't touch me like this. Now it is my job to make sure that she could trust me. So I had to take a step back and be like, I'm sorry, this is really hard for you. I need to protect your heart, even in this really tested. And it was so angry. I was so angry. I was so, so angry that I did not do that well. And then we end up yelling at each other. And then she's like, I need some space. And I had to let her go because I needed to let her know that she could trust me. She could trust her heart. My kids will always tell me if they feel like something's not right or if they feel like I'm coming on too strong. Mom, I need five minutes. So they go to the referee and they, they would go to the timer, set the timer for five minutes, and then they will come back when the timer is done. This is unheard of in our culture. You no, know, you sit there and you take it and then you get a spanking and you get hit. You want to grab your mom back, you get a spanking. Oh, yeah. But we want to make sure that we're not putting anxiety in the spirit. Because mm-hmm. how would you feel if you're angry and everything and Austin came to grab you and be like, Josie, calm down. You would feel immediately attacked, right? Oh, yeah. So we want to treat our kids the way that we want to be treated. And then she left, she went upstairs and I said, sis, I would really like to talk to you when you can. She says, I don't feel loved right now. I need a minute. And then she came down on her own accord. I said, can I hold you? I want to always get the permission when I am about to breach the personal space. Again, if you're out there in the world and you go and grab somebody and you hug them, 
you don't know how they're going to react. So we want to treat our children so that they mm -hmm. could have those proper skills for the world, right? So then we talked about it. And I said, something is really hurting you in your spirit. That's making you so angry, especially towards your brother. And she just confided into me why she was so angry. And I was able to speak. And, I, and then I had to bring in the acceptance part. I accept what you did was not okay. Mm -hmm. That was not okay. And then we talked about it. And then she said, mom, I am so sorry. Then she went to and she went to speak to her brother. She asked for his forgiveness. And I and I just had took the second and I said, Asilia, it is very important for especially men to feel protected and loved by their family. Because what happens is men take this way deeper than women. When they don't feel protected or loved, they end up showing it or withholding it from their wives, their significant others, their girlfriends, even the people that they claim to love. So it's very important that we show men it is okay you are loved you are safe you are welcome here oh my gosh that's such a big piece because I know that showed up for me in my grown-up journey of not feeling that trust not feeling that acceptance mm -hmm. definitely not feeling that love like that word was never used it was just implied and I know how that played out for all of us like we we're grasping for attention anywhere we can get it, right? And so I think it's just, we have, oh my gosh, like the word that comes to my mind is like, we have so much power and we can abuse it so quickly. I, unfortunately, that really is the case that we have so much power and we abuse it so quickly. But I don't think it's intentional. And that's the thing is like, people don't know what to do mm -hmm. with their feelings. When you've been told over and over, or just shut up and obey or shut up and just follow the lead you don't know how to express yourself properly you don't know how to trust and we find a lot of men go out there and they they have six girlfriends in five months because nobody has taught them to trust nobody has taken care of their heart i was just speaking to a gentleman today and he's a young guy and he'd been on my heart for a while and he'd been giving a lot of trouble and then i felt the lord spoke to my spirit and says he doesn't feel like anybody loves him. He doesn't feel like he has a spot where somebody could take care of his heart. And I was speaking to him about these things. And he says, it seems you, you speak as if you know, you've known me, you've known me. And he says, I don't feel like anybody gives air to what I want. It's always like I am the byproduct of everybody else's last minute will. And that's very important for our children not to feel that way. They need to know that they are in a trust in relationship. They are accepted and they are loved. And it comes back to those three. Like we need to like stamp those like everywhere in the house of that yeah. having that trust that acceptance and that love like you were saying it plays hugely in your parenting it plays in your mm -hmm. marriage it plays with friendships and relationships and I know earlier you were speaking of like 50 50 giving it 50 50 mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. that, is that really doable <laughs> Yeah. And that's where we go back to what are we going to do about it? Because you have the power to be able to accept things. Have you created a trusting thing where you're going to give that 50, whether that person gives it back? Because that's how a lot of abusive relationships start is one person starts overcompensating and then the other person willingly takes it. Oh, you're going to give 95. Well, thank you here's my 5%. Mm -hmm. And then we find these people become very bitter and aggressive and low-key hateful because they have not been taken care of. Their hearts mm -hmm. haven't been taken care of. So I don't want to feel bitter or angry towards my kids, especially right now when I'm looking at my floor, I see the chips that they just had for lunch on there. The, everything is on there on the floor. But guess what? They're going to want to come with me to an event that I'm doing tonight. And I'm going to let them know, I'm so sorry. I can't trust for you to take care of the place that I'm going to be at because you didn't take care of my house. So I can't take you. And I'm really sorry. I, I genuinely empathize with the fact that you can't come because I can't trust for you to make a mess where I'm going to be. And that brings it to the real world. Can you imagine if you went to buy a car and you never made any payments and then you'd be like, oh shit, I got into a wreck. I'm just going to go back to that place and where I bought the car and they're going to give me another car. They're going to look at you like, Get the heck out of here before we call the cops, you know, and this is what we need to do. We need to make sure our children understand that they have the power to make 
powerful decisions mm-hmm. and also some really dumb ones. And it takes power to make dumb ones because you have to literally suppress your good sense to make a bad decision. So you have to be intentionally powerful to make bad decisions. Like sometimes I look at different things and I'm like, wow, that was a really bad idea. How did they even come to that? And I'm like, yeah, because we have to suppress who we really are to make bad decisions. It doesn't come naturally. Mm-hmm. It doesn't come naturally for us to just hate people. Mm-hmm. We have to make conscious choices not to love. So I want to help them make conscious choices to love, to honor, to respect, to give to others what is due. Oh, and it's such a beautiful thing. And you're sharing like mic drops, like words of wisdom that I think the people that are going to hear this and the moms, especially, they're going to just be so filled up with this because it shows what's possible. Like you're the light that shows that this is possible. Like if you put in that work and you put in that effort, it's possible to create this relationship with your children. Yes, it is. And it, and it is so worth it. Like we spend so much time on social media. We spend so much time eating out and doing all of that stuff. And these things are all fading away, but our relationships with our children, our relationship with their heart, our relationship with the, our husbands, these are the things that require the most time because these are the things that's going to really impact your life. I see it all the time. I see the families I love being around are these moms who've been intentional with their children. My kids won't go close to some people that they believe the kids have horrible attitudes. They're like, "Uh uh-uh. We don't want to be there because we don't feel comfortable over mm-hmm. there. They're yelling at their mom. Oh, mom, we don't want to be there. Mm. Mind you, they do it too sometimes. But because we have such a relationship where they come back and they, they take responsibility of their actions and they know that I accept them and I also love them enough not to let them stay mm-hmm. in the bad decisions, then they'll feel comfortable and trust that mm-hmm. I'm going to take care of their hearts even as they take care of mine. Yes. Oh, thank you so much much for being here and sharing all that with us. Do you have any resources? Because I know for me, it was a book that you recommended to me and I would love for you to speak on it. Oh my goodness. Loving Our Kids on Purpose by Danny Silk revolutionized the way I thought. It really actually helps me to do one thing very well. And that was love God properly by loving other people. Because you can't love God properly if you don't love other people. So it helped me understand that we could trust, we could accept, and we could love properly. If we set up the right framework, it could happen in a way that's going to be beneficial and very exciting and loving for the next person too. This conversation was gold. Is there anything else on your heart that you feel like you want to speak life (laughs) too. Yeah. Every time we hear something really good, I feel like the first part that comes to our mind is, oh, I've done it wrong so many times. I don't know if I could do it again. But I just tell you, every single day that we have, every single moment, it's a gift. Like you cannot physically give yourself another moment. So you get to choose. You get to be powerful and choose what you're going to do in your next moment. And when I fail, when I don't do things right, I give myself a ton of grace. I have grace for me in the bucket loads because I give grace out in the in the ton loads. So take the grace that is for you. Take the peace and learn how to trust. If you're having a hard time trusting people because you've already felt like everything that you've done has yielded no success, just go ahead and give it a try. I mean, what is it going to hurt anyways? Yes, give it a try. And I love that you're speaking to, as humans, like our first thing is to think of all the bad we've done. And it's harder for us to come back and give ourselves that grace. And then, and let's just, and everybody says, be realistic. I would, I would just encourage you, be fantastical. (laughs) Be realistic. Be, imagine yourself as the parent who loves the children, who wants to accept, who wants to trust. Imagine where you where you're gonna go, what you want to do in your life. Imagine the relationships you're gonna have. Imagine Christmases in the future when your children come home because you have real relationships with them. Imagine the peace and the joy that's gonna permeate your household because you've learned how to love people and how to trust them and to accept them in the good and the bad. Mm, that joyful anticipation will get you yeah. through those hard days. 
Yes, ma'am. Like we have a joke here in the house. I'm like, okay, go pack your bags. We're taking you to the orphanage. <laughs> and then my kids are like, okay. <laughs> and then they just leave and pretend and come back. That's my signal. Is like, I am feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling like I can't, I'm not loving you properly. And I always want to make sure that my kids know, mom, we love you so mm. much. And I'm like, that's because I love you too. I love you so much. And I want to take care of your heart. So I want my kids to come and say hi. And Josie, yes. that's okay. Yes. Yeah, so you be able to get Khalid and Domine for me. Absolutely. Okay. Hi, Zona, kids, can you introduce yourself, please? My hair really sucks right now. <laughs> Okay, so the kids introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Chloe and I'm 11 years old. Hi, I'm a nine and I'm nine and I'm 10 years old. Hi, I'm Cleed and I'm seven years old. Hey, eight years old. <laughs> I just had a birthday. Isn't she like nine and seven? Seven. Yes. Yeah, so I have a seven, eight, nine. ten, and eleven year old. Yes. yes. And then we're learning how to do what? Love yes. each other. Love each other. We're learning to love each other. And when we love, are we gonna make mistakes? A lot of them. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna make a lot of mistakes, but how do we come back from them? We say I'm sorry and apologize. We apologize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what is my job? To love us and you love you. To love us even as I love you. And what's my other job, Khalid? Keep us safe. To keep you safe. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we do that when we take care of people's hearts. We have to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love your family and I love you guys. And oh, you guys like make me want to tear up because it's so beautiful because it's possible. It is very possible. And yeah, and I always tell my kids, I want to have what with you guys when you grow older? A relationship. A relationship. But I have to, I only have half of that. They have the other half. Mm -hmm. And that's and that sometimes can be very scary because we we've always been taught to like take control but that's not how do you feel love when i take control in your life they can't no. no yes we want to we want to be able to do things that's going to bring everybody honor mm -hmm. the situation yeah and protect everybody's hearts that's involved yes so where can people connect with you where can they be a part of this and like support you in any way? Yeah, well, right now, Josie, I have taken myself off of social media because these kids really need me. They they need their mommy. I'm doing a lot of uh, catering and um, helping out with some um, different things that I believe in. So I don't have a lot of extra time and I really don't want to make them feel that they're secondary. So mm -hmm. right now, I don't feel like this is a season for me to be out there. But if people want to get in touch with me, they could get in touch with me for you. Yes, that's perfect. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. guys are so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being um, a part of the show today. Thank you for sharing your heart and your story. Like it matters. And mm -hmm. your story is it's going to change so many hearts and lives. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.